All right, so on Monday, we talked to you about the diet and cancer connection. And we've talked a lot on these lives about how uh, eating uh, animal-based products is has been linked pretty strongly to, to cancer, and it just is. But I, well, I shared specifically from the book Proteinaholic, there's a study that he references in here called The Food, Nutrition, Physical Activity, and Prevention of Cancer, Global Perspective. And it's um, considered a very good study about diet and cancer connection because it was not funded by industry or government. It is a public, publicly funded um, uh, study. And so they, um, in theory, don't have any... Uh, reason no, to lie no, no to skin us. in the game no reason to, to come up with weird right. stuff and they I'll, I'll give you i'll run through it real quickly if you want to i basically read read it to you on monday but i'll give you real quickly what they came up with their suggestions are be as lean as possible within a normal body weight we've talked before how um the bmi of uh, the high end of the normal bmi of 24.9 is probably too high 22.5 is probably a healthier uh, goal, right. which a lot of people are like, I can never do that. But that, you know, I hate, I'm here to give well, you and, optimum. And like we said on Monday too, is that the Western culture has accepted a much heavier body as, as the normal. Yeah. You know, so being overweight, what is really overweight is now considered normal. And then to be obese is considered overweight. So Right, exactly. The, the, the yeah, this, norm is moving upward. Right. Uh, the second thing they recommend is be physically active um, as part of everyday life. Limit the consumption of energy-dense foods. We've talked about uh, calorie density versus nutrition density. So, you know, eat foods that are nutritionally dense and not, not just calorically dense. Um, eat foods of mostly of plant origins. This is not news to anyone. Uh, limit or avoid your intake of red meat. Completely avoid processed meat. Um, I, you know, had a conversation again with somebody about bacon and they were like, well, I'll just eat prosciutto. And I know he said it as a joke and, I'm, and you know, prosciutto might be one iota better, but it's, you know, right. less bad is not healthy. And to me, that's not a joke. To me, that's an uncomfortable, you know, um, throwback to the And pe people do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a thing. Um, the other th the next thing they recommend is limit alcoholic drinks. Again, not news. Um, aim to meet all your nutritional needs through diet alone, i.e. do not take dietary supplements, mm -hmm. which we've told you before, the only dietary supplements you need to be taking are B12 and um, vitamin D if you live in a place where you can't get sunshine. Um, limit consumption of salt and avoid moldy cereal. In case you didn't figure that I out. I don't know why they felt the need to tell us to not eat mold, but, you know. I mean, I don't know. How long ago was the study done? I mean, it's a situation where people store grains for a long period no, of time. No, it's, it's not that long ago. Mm -hmm. It's not that old of a study. So, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and then, let's see. What else do they have? Is that all of them? Nope, that's it. That's the last one they said is don't eat mold. And so that was Monday. Yeah, that was what we talked about on Monday. Again, that's from the book Proteinaholic. Um, I recommend this book very highly if you're interested. It's, it's easy to read, it's well referenced, and it's written by an obesity surgeon who himself used to uh, eat the standard American diet, was on you know, keto for a while, and people tell him, well, you're biased because you're vegan, and he said, no, I'm vegan because I've read the science. Right. And that's the thing we try to explain to people is, I'm not pushing a vegan agenda because I'm vegan, I'm telling you this is the healthiest way to eat. Right. So great book, uh, it's on our resources page. Um, if you buy it through our resources page, we get a couple of pennies for recommending it. So I would ask you to go to rnrjourney.com on the resources page if you're going to buy that book. And it always reminds me of the one uh, cardiologist that's on YouTube that talks about um, there's really two types of cardiologists out mm -hmm. there, vegans and the one that haven't read the study. Yeah, they haven't read the science. Right. Absolutely. So um, then on Tuesday, we talked about diet and aging. And you don't have your notes here to talk about that, do you? I don't. I don't. And I don't even know where they are. So. Okay. Can you, do you remember anything you talked about? I can talk about telomeres. Go ahead, talk about telomeres. Okay. Let me see if it's over here. You talk about telomeres. All right, so I can tell you a little bit about telomeres. Telomeres are the uh, little caps on your DNA that keep it from unraveling. You can think about it like the um, end of a shoelace. That, and as every time your DNA replicates, every time, you know, it's, it, it, which it does every day, all the time, um, those telomeres get shorter. And that's what causes aging, is the shortening of your telomeres. And they've always thought that the only thing that we could do was slow the progression of that. But it turns out that if you eat plant-based, even for just 90 days, you can actually grow your telomeres back out um, up to 29%. Now, the interesting thing that the limit, I guess, on this study was that they didn't say 
if you continue to eat plant-based, does that continue? Like, can you reverse aging? Am I going to look 35 again real soon? Um, it didn't say that, but absolutely it, it, the science has shown that if you eat plant-based, you can uh, not only slow the degradation of your telomeres, but extend them. Right. You found your notes. Yeah, and basically uh, what we talked about is this 2017 study that covered 188 countries um, that accessed the effects of 79 different factors on death and disability. Mm -hmm. It was funded by Bill Gates, so everybody's familiar with the Gates Foundation, I think, and um, they're pretty much a not, not, not a biased... Um, in theory, we don't in know theory, them to yeah, be biased. Exactly. Um, it found that dietary risk uh, was a leading cause of death and disability. So basically what, what this study said was there's a very small percentage of people that hereditary may get can hereditarily may get cancer or, or have some kind of illnesses. But most of these things are occurred because of the diet that we consume. Environmental issues. And environmental issues, yes. Mm -hmm. um, similar study was done in the U.S. that basically showed the same results. And, and associated with 26% of overall deaths were a result of uh, poor diets. Um, there was an article in a journal of nutrition, the, the journal of he can't nutrition, read his own writing. <laughs> oh, journal of nutrition article. That's why it sounded weird to me. Um, foods most most consistent um, mortality included high consumption. As I always say that it's wrong, okay. Go ahead. High consumption of fruit, vegetables, whole grains and legumes and lower consumption of red and processed meats. I mean, I say that, but as I'm saying, I'm saying, well, we've been saying that forever. That's not news. It's not news. It's just more backing, more science that's backing up. And I mean, if you're paying attention to the news at all, you're starting to see that even the mainstream media is starting to say, eat plants, eat plants, eat plants. Right. Hey, Brandy. Hey, Brandy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We're always happy to share. Sure. It's always fun. And Brandy, if you are like, uh, you know, like our page and follow us, and make sure you click on the <laughs> notifications. He's really obsessed with people well, because, getting notifications. You know, as many people that have liked and follow us aren't getting to see them, and I just right. want to make sure they do. So you have to make sure you go into the notifications, which is towards the top, and click all posts. And then every time we're live, you'll it'll be, let you know. It'll let you know. And then you can decide whether or not you want to watch that particular <laughs> episode. Um, so that was uh, Tuesday. We talked about diet and aging. And then on Wednesday, we talked about the paleo diet, which is very similar to the keto diet, but paleo is basically that you, they eat like a caveman. And I do have people who say, well, I just eat like a caveman. Here's the issue with that. A, it's impossible. Um, I, it makes me laugh because I go through the grocery store and I see like bags of, of pancake mix that say paleo. And I'm like, I'm sure our paleo ancestors were all over that. Right. They, they went back, you know, 10,000 years and got that. Uh... So Probably. the reason you can't eat like a paleo human is those foods don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the, the plants don't exist and the, um, the meats don't exist. It's just not a thing. I also talked to you about how, um, how unlikely it is that humans were eating meat every day because I, and I read you the list of the top six uh, predators and lions only managed to make a kill. 25% of the time when they go hunt. And so what I did is, because I, I couldn't find any data on how paleo humans hunted, how, how often successful. they were successful. They forgot to write that in their uh, cave drawings. Um, but I averaged the top six predators. Let's assume that humans, which I don't think they were, but let's assume either. that they were as good a predator as the top six predators. And it comes out to 50% of the time that humans would have gone on a hunt and got 50% of the time. Now, there's no way you can hunt every day, you know, whether, illness, having to clean the meat you got before, et cetera, et cetera. There's all these issues. So we decided to estimate that maybe you got to kill 2.5 times a week, which would mean out of 14 days, you would have meat five days. And people who eat paleo are eating meat three times a day. Right. And so we talked about how it's just not, I like guess not apples to apples. And paleo humans, depending upon where they lived, had a very vastly different diet. The Inuit ate mostly blubber. And don't tell me that's an excuse to eat fat because yeah. they were not healthy humans. No. No. Um, they were barely on the edge of scraping out a living of survival. We They're actually talked about doing that it. several uh, episodes ago. A couple of weeks ago. Right, showed you the science um, on that. And then there were other places where they were eating mostly plants. So I'm, while it's interesting, I think, you know, as a person who likes to learn, I love to learn about, you know, paleo humans. That's fun. I don't think that it should in, in any way inform us of how we should eat today. It's very similar to deciding to feed your dog based on how, how a stray dog eats. A stray dog will eat anything it can find. Right, it's trying to survive. It doesn't, it's not thinking about the length of survival. Right. Just and the current Just can survival. I eat right now. Right, which so, goes to all those types of diets. Right. And then 
I'm going to say the other thing to keep in mind too is paleo men and women, you know, were not sitting behind a desk eight hours yeah, a day. They were, they were very, not then come active. home in front of the TV and watch the TV for hours on end. You know, I mean, just there's nothing about a paleo diet that makes sense. That's just the facts. It just doesn't. And I, you know, and the other thing I said was paleo men, paleo humans love to scavenge. So if you want to go eat roadkill, okay, <laughs> I have nothing to say about right, that. That's exactly. fine. So that's what we talked about on Wednesday. If you want more information on that and the actual numbers and all of that, go back and watch our live from Wednesday. And then yesterday we talked about overcoming self-sabotage. And what did I do with my notes? Oh, I didn't bring them down here. So I'm going to have to go from memory on my self-sabotage. So fortunately notes. you're a psychologist. So it's a good work. thing. Um, but if you want all the details, go back and watch yesterday's live where I talked about self-sabotage. But I, I talked about how part of the issue is the voice in our head and that, you know, from way back, somebody told us, oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, that's not a good idea. Oh, you might fail. And we've internalized that. And one of the tips that I gave you, and this is a tip I give all my clients, whether I'm working with them and on their health and nutrition, or I'm working with them as an executive, you know, huge corporate executive, doesn't matter, whatever kind of coaching I'm doing, I always tell people, give the voice in your head a name. Um, I named mine Harriet. 25 years ago before I ever even took a psychology class I gave her a name because I wanted to be able to tell her to shut up <laughs> she's very noisy and the thing is she is allowed to be part of me and that's fine she is a part of me she is not allowed to drive she is not allowed to give directions she can sit in the back seat and she can be quiet right. so I highly recommend that if you have an issue with self-sabotage that you give that voice in your head a name because two things it allows you to do it allows you to actually recognize him or her when she's speaking and it allows you to be like wait a minute that's not true and so we did talk about that some yesterday and because we did it yesterday I actually wrote that chapter in the book yesterday there you go. Well. book's almost done I am uh, the first draft is almost the first done. draft I'm two-ish chapters away from having a complete first draft of right. the book so very excited about that um, but yeah self-sabotage is another thing you can do is make sure you're eating nutritionally dense food because that way you're not um, giving your body just empty calories and having it say, hey, I'm still hungry and having it feed you uh, and you have you feed it more junk. So uh, listen to the voice in your head, figure that out. We talked about catastrophication. So if that voice in your head is saying, oh, you're going to fail, you know what? Go down that road. Go all the way down that road. What does it look like? And then come up with a plan and that'll help you um, hush that voice because you'll have a plan to, to if something is going to happen or not happen the way it claims that it is. So I would definitely recommend because I don't have my notes to give you a really good summary that you go back and watch yesterday. Yeah, it was just yesterday, exactly. Because it, I, I did have, um, I was better it, at it yesterday when I had my notes. Into it. I don't know. I thought I brought them down, but well, I guess today's I about the recap anyhow. So yeah, <laughs> but that's what we talked about yesterday. If you have questions or comments or concerns or things you'd like us to address, definitely let us know. I'm always happy to do research that's specific. I mean, I do a lot of reading. That's how we do daily lives mm -hmm. five days a week. Is I like to learn. I like to read. I like to take classes. I take continuing ed classes that are meant for mm -hmm. you know doctors and nurses. Um, I, so I do a lot of that, which is where I get my information, but I absolutely, um, if you have a question or you have something that's stressing you, definitely let us know that and I'll look for something specific. Right. And, uh, like, uh, and I, maybe I'm speaking directly to Brandy here, but um, if you want more information, you, this is the first one you saw, if you missed a bunch, just go back because we do them every single day, Monday through Friday, and we talk about different subjects so you can go back and see what we have. If you, if you find it more convenient, what I'm starting to do is upload our dailies to our website. With the good quality, the HD Yeah, camera. so it's the HD quality, so you get top, you know, top quality. And I am going to be adding a search function. I'm just trying to get everything set up for that. That might still be a month or two away. And that's on our journey.com. And that's com. on our journey.com. Yeah. So if you become a member, you have access to all this stuff, you know, for as long as you want it. You can go back, you can reference it, you can search it out. And the community page. And the community yeah. page where you can, well, we post articles. Other people post articles. Um, it's a very um, friendly environment. We don't allow any trolling, so there's not going to be any fighting or anything like that. And we'd love to have you uh, belong. And not to mention, again, I know I said this before, but Tuesday night we're doing at 7 o'clock p.m. We are doing a live Q&A where you can come in and you can participate as long as you're a member. Um, and, you know, use it as a support group. Find out what other people are asking. Um, just, you know. Generally, I know I'm running. I mean, he likes to talk about it. He's yes. very excited. About I am very that, excited about it because it helps awesome. a lot of people. 
I will be watching yesterday's live. Yay, yes, absolutely. It's a great live. I definitely recommend you, you take time to watch it. It's like 15 minutes long. Yes, exactly. Um, Obviously, we have our, our webinar at howtofeedahuman.com. We mm -hmm. definitely recommend that you go and check that out. Um, it, it'll give you access to more of the psychology and, and just more information about eating this way and eating healthy and health and longevity. So that's at howtofeedahuman.com. And again, our business website is rnrjourney.com. Both of those are the hashtags I have up at the top there, and so I recommend you go check them out. And I'd just like to say that so we've been doing Monday through Friday lives on, on this subject. For almost 18 months now. It's amazing. So, if you're just joining us, there's a lot of information out there. It, there really is. Yes. Did you have anything else you wanted to say about this week, or you know, re recapping, or uh, anything like that? Um, I don't think so. No. No, I think that's about it. I mean, All it's right. Friday. It's time to start the weekend. Make sure that you like and share. Let other people know about us. That's how we get right. to make a difference. And thanks for watching. <laughs> and so, with that, we will say, eat real food. Mostly, Mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, Have guys. a good one. We'll see you on Monday.